Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed the film. My name is Tamar. I am the director, producer, and co-writer of The Great Disconnect. It's such a pleasure to be here with you, and I want to thank the Marta Loop Justice Film Festival organizers for putting on this virtual event. I was asked to answer a few questions, and so here they are. Physical communities, especially in North America, are not designed for interaction with others. How can we change this? I would say that it's perhaps true that some physical communities aren't designed for interaction, but I would argue that there are many spaces that are also designed for interaction. And I would quote one city planner who once told me that there are many beautiful places that you would think would help gather a lot of people and it simply doesn't happen. Because ultimately it is up to us to create our own opportunities to connect with others. Whether it's just for the simple joy of getting together with friends and family, or whether it's to get together with others to make a difference in our communities. You saw Kirsten simply invite people in her building to connect with them on the rooftops because she knew that it was important for her to know her neighbors. We also had Ron Finley in the film who ended up doing something um, very impactful to really create interaction in his community, but to also make it um, a better place. Do not underestimate the power you have to get out into your community and connect with others. Is it too late to change the lack of city planning that encourages community? Are we just stuck with the way it is? I don't think it's ever too late to connect and communicate with our city planners and our municipalities to make our communities a better place. There are many city planners, urban designers, and architects coming together, trying to design spaces um, to make them more equipped for interaction. Many areas are actually also being retrofitted. So we know that it's on their minds as well. But again, it comes down to us. It comes down to the individual, to the communities themselves, to get out and make sure people are connecting with each other. I'll use myself as an example. I moved to a new condominium a little while ago and there were raised beds in front of the condominium. And I decided to take them over because nobody was doing anything with them. And I decided to plant an herb garden, much like Ron Finley. Actually, I'm inspired by Ron Finley and that's the reason that I did uh, that th sort of thing in front of my condominium. And it has done so many great things to the neighborhood. Uh, many people have gotten involved with me in the planting and in the watering of this beautiful garden. And it has allowed me to connect with many of my neighbors. So again, I encourage you to get out and to be inspired by the story of Ron Finley and make a difference in your neighborhood. COVID-19 has taught us that we are all connected. Do you think most people have realized how important this connection is? COVID-19 has certainly taught us that we are all connected and I think people have realized how important, it, how important people are to their lives. I would say that those of us who were connected prior to the pandemic, those of us who invested in our relationships and our communities, likely fared better throughout this pandemic and will continue to fare better than those of us who perhaps have taken our communities for granted or who have been maybe extremely busy um, with a whole, a whole bunch of other things that have disallowed us to communicate um, with our friends and neighbors. But perhaps this pandemic will teach us that we should not take our communities and our neighbors and our friends for granted and that we should connect with them. I should mention, however, that many underprivileged societies who were facing social isolation and loneliness prior to pandemic have really struggled. As sad as an unfortunate this is, I think it's really exposed many of the social issues that we all really need to address together. That being said, I saw many acts of kindness and heroism from all over the world. It has certainly inspired me to take action and I hope that it inspires you as well. COVID also forced us to communicate and connect in new ways. Do you see this as a positive? And do you think we will continue with these connections? COVID-19 has certainly changed the way that we have been connecting with each other, especially because we weren't able to connect face to face, which is the natural way and the most human way for us to connect. So to answer that question, I really believe that things like Zoom and FaceTime and LinkedIn are fantastic tools that have allowed us to connect with coworkers, family members, uh, and friends, but they are tools that are helping us get through this pandemic and that are allowing us to connect with others all over the world. But let's be very clear, they do not replace the human connections that are so crucial to our well-being. Nothing can replace the natural ways that we have connected throughout centuries and that is face-to-face. -face. 
And there will come a day where it will be safe to do that again. But for the time being, it is important to make sure that we are practicing physical distancing measures. We tend to think that only wealthy people can live in beautiful surroundings. How can we change that so everyone lives in beauty? The belief that there's only a select few of us who can live in these beautiful places that enhance interaction is simply not true. And we can all look at Ron Finley, who decided that his community was no lesser than anyone else's. And he decided to plant a garden in front of his house, which had an impact not only on his own personal community, but uh, all over the world. There are so many simple things that we can all do that can have such a huge impact on our communities and people all over the world. So I encourage you all to take action. Our emotional communities are often far apart physically. Isn't it true that technology has greatly increased our ability to stay connected with those not close to us physically? It is certainly true that many of us live far away from our friends and family and many of our loved ones. And that technology has certainly enhanced the way to connect with each other um, more so than we have perhaps in the past. But again, I would say that it is crucially important to make sure that we are investing in our friendships and our communities that are in close proximity to us. It has an effect on our well-being that goes beyond any technology can do for us. But I'd like to quote Sherry Turkel, whose TED Talk appeared in our film, who says that we really have to learn to create a balance between our virtual communities and our real life communities. And our real life communities provide so much to our well-being that technology can never ever replace. So I hope I've gotten the message across to you. Thanks again, everyone. Again, my name is Tamar. I hope you'll reach out to me if you have any more questions. Have a great evening.